Hello, my name is Tony Alvaro, and I'm here to present you with information for the A-plus certification from CompTIA. This course is designed to give you a brief introduction to the A-plus CompTIA certification. I will try to explain the main concepts of each CompTIA objective and point out differences beyond the current 1001 and 1002 series, as well as things to look out for in regards to the newer exam coming out in the next year. The lab part of this course is meant to give you hands-on experience with building, repairing, and configuring aspects of a PC, as well as networks and other related things like mobile devices and IoT devices that are part of the certification test. I recommend you go out and get yourself a PC or a laptop that you wouldn't mind taking apart. Obviously, don't buy the most expens ex expensive equipment out there unless you are ready to build yourself a gaming rig with lots of memory and plenty of processor power. Uh, keep in mind to have something current enough to satisfy the exam requirements. When I first enrolled to get the A plus certification, the school I went to gave us a computer to take home and that's how we sort of learned by taking it apart. A laptop or a PC is fine as long laptops are meant to be upgradable too it's just that not all of them are meant to be upgraded i can't tell you how many times i've had to replace broken touch screens and other parts inside of laptops because they break easy there is tons of material out there on youtube to help you understand concepts further after watching the course throughout this this course i will be pointing out sites or ways to get more information on certain topics that I find of most interest to me. Today exam, today's exam has Android and IoT devices including for troubleshooting which is, a, which is good to learn if you want to increase the range of your skills but it is still a main a small fractured fraction of the test. There are two exams you must pass in order to receive the certification but don't be distraught the exam is fairly easy as it is one of the most basic certifications available for prospective PC techs and will sure you land you an entry level job in help desk PC repair and even networking with that said let's start off with a basic uh, overview of what the exam certification looks like so like I said there is two exams the A plus is renewed every two years the latest exam was released back in January of 2019, so more than likely the new exam will be released sometime early 2022, which is next year. That means that you have a little under a year to get this current certification, which will be valid for three years. You can still take the new exam, but the validity will still only be good until the next exam is released or the three years. I had the same problem the third time I renewed my exam. So I just waited on the newer exam because some, some employers will look at which exam number you have. If you are new to this field, this would been, be definitely the way to go because it at least says you have the most current certification available. Uh, I will jump into the objectives of each core and we'll start talking a little more about actual exam related material. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I will get back to you as soon as I can or leave comments. So let's get into the details. As you can see here, uh, this is the core one. There's a core one and the core two. There is a maximum of 90 questions. They're multiple choice and performance based. So that is why it's important to kind of buy yourself a laptop or a computer or something that you can take apart. That's not too expensive. The length of the test is 90 minutes. They recommend 12 months experience as an IT support specialist with a passing score of 675, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is where I say that it is important as mobile devices and virtualization and cloud computing is only is about 26% of the test. But if you put together hardware, networking, troubleshooting, networking and hardware to together it's um, counts for almost 75 percent of core one test core two is a little harder but still not completely hard and it's a bit more evenly distributed so let me show you a picture of the pc i started with this is one of my first pcs that i had it was a gateway computer 
uh, probably around the same time as this picture. Uh, obviously, you probably can still learn something from this type of computer, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're trying to be a bit more modern. And I'm going to show you what they look like now. They've come a long way. As you can see, they have all kinds of bells and whistles, curved screen, really detailed graphics. Um, and all these parts, even the graphics card has memory on it nowadays. So, you know, it just depends if you just want it for the test, if you're ready for um, gaming, if you have fast internet and you want something fast to give you good graphics and give you good frame per frames per second, then that's obviously the way to go. Here's a Ford in it firewall, which is a hardware piece of hardware that you will see out in the field. It is for networking. You really don't have to know exactly what Fortinet and a FortiGate does. You more than likely just have to know the basics of how to troubleshoot one of these devices through either uh, field support or through the phone. As uh, like I said, you can get into all kinds of jobs after you get the certification. This is another device that I have seen out in the field. It is a sort of end device that you know makes you have everything on premises as far as your um, database and all your um, let's say receipts and invoices it helps with that and this is what a typical network look, look like and you can be in either one of these areas as a PC tech or as an A plus certification network plus certification and security certification the way I like to start off is by giving you the six step troubleshooting and its purpose would be so that you can learn the way to troubleshoot um, problems out in the field whether you're doing it by phone or out in the field this will still apply to either way. Step one, identify the problem. Establish a theory of probable cause. Uh, test this the theory to determine cause establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution step five verify full system functionality and if applicable implement preventive measures document findings actions and outcomes so this is important for the test you will probably be asked about knowing each one of these steps and they'll tell ask you something like what is step five of a pre preventive measures? What is step three? How do you, you know, that sort of thing on the test. So to start off, I will jump right into a troubleshooting process. Uh, field work example. So scenario one, design a CAD workstation computer. You have been tasked with building a computer that will be used for computer aided design or CAD. It needs to be powerful enough to run CAD software programs. Remember, that means that high-end multi-core CPU, lots of fast RAM, and a professional video card. Think about the type of software that will be running and answer the following questions, providing as many specifications as possible. Then watch the corresponding video and complete the simulation. So which type of CPU will you select? Research the manufacturer, Intel or AMD, you will always be debating whether in Intel is better for because it's more expensive or AMD is better because of its uh, bit lesser cost compared to Intel. On the internet and specify an exact model of CPU you want to use. Which type of RAM will you use and how much? So again, I want to go back to, to this right here. These are six steps that are very critical in how you approach the situation that we just jumped into. And with that said, I'm going to go back and give you a little more information on what to use and what to do when it comes to the test. So here we have uh, where we at with the, with the testing. So as you can see, CompTIA is at the beginner novice of every single certification path. So no matter what, the A plus may not be where you want to go, but it will definitely start you off in the right direction. So if you start right here, depending on whether you're intermediate, advanced, expert, or whatever, you need to start here and continue on your path. If you're information security, if you're into networking cloud, 
depending on everything that you want to, and depending on your on the goals you want to accomplish. Okay, so this is a good roadmap here to see to um, a good roadmap for you to start thinking which certification to get next after the A plus. Because again, A plus seems hard, but if you study enough, it won't be that hard. So let me give you a quick another quick tip here if you want to jump into this uh, you go ahead and choose cert master because cert master will help you learn the test and it comes from the same people that uh, create the test so here is Cert Master Practice, Cert Master to Renew, Cert Master to Learn, Cert Master Labs, 40 hours, and you can choose each one of these. Now let's go into some books. This is a book by Mike Myers. He is a very popular author when it comes to CompTIA certifications. As you can see, it has many, um, let me look at the uh, this one doesn't have bookmarks but, but here is the content so uh, most books will start with the microprocessors the RAM the motherboards I will be starting with the motherboards just as where it started but I will go back and start when I show you the objectives so I started with showing you the objectives which is this right here mobile devices I'm not starting with the mobile devices this time but on the next video I promise to go by the order of this PDF document which comes directly from CompTIA as you can see here so 1.0 is mobile devices and then 1.2 starts off with operating system 32 bit versus 6 64 bit RAM limitations and so forth so uh, for this in this video I didn't look at this before um, before making the video so I am starting with this 3.5 given the scenario install and configure motherboard CPUs and add-on cards so that takes us back to the scenario in which we started here so this is the scenario that we started with and that was that pertains to this part of the exam which is okay we don't have to go in order but I will start going in order after this video to show you another book this is another book by David Prowse this is an exam cram so it kinda what I like about this book is that it gives you it gives you um, it crams information so it doesn't really go into a lot of detail but it does give you all the important stuff and in the end of each chapter it gives you a um, it gives you questions directly from the test you could study 901 even if your objective is to take the 1001 you probably will still pass there are very small differences between each test unless you go back like maybe more than five or six years uh, another book is this one right here, CompTIA A Plus by Quentin Doctor, Practice Test. And this one provides with many, many questions. So since I said I was going to start with um, see, explain the, with the motherboard. Here we go. So just a second here. See, this one goes straight into the question so for example it gives you uh, what is the distance limitation of firewire 800 standard when implemented over fiber optic cable huh that's a good question I don't remember that one but it could be maybe a hundred meters let's find out yep a hundred meters that's about 300 feet so it doesn't change much whether it's um, fiber or cat 6 and then another book is this one, the complete study guide. This one, let's see what we can get out of this one. Part two, motherboards. So, 
so here we go this is the difference and this is where I was going to start um, our explanation here but before I do let me just go over the exam objectives real quick so like I said I'm um, will be st I started in that area but uh, for the next videos I will be going by this certification here so be prepared to learn about mobile devices given a scenario install configure laptop hardware and components and like I said I've even taken apart laptops I've even taken a or Xbox ones that wouldn't turn on though I, I don't solder once I realize that you need a solder uh, chip off the off the Xbox motherboard and back on there I had to give up because I don't know how to solder and I don't want to ruin it so I will be going by these two objectives I will be all these five PDFs I will be zipping them up and uploading them so that you guys can take it and it will help you uh, in your journey towards a plus certification so now back to the certification slide let's see here Where do I go from here? From current slide, okay. So here we have Advanced My Technology Extended or ATX, and all of these are part of the motherboard. We have BIOS component, RAM goes on the motherboard, the hard drive has a cable connected. We don't really use optical drive but some people just do it just because you never know sometimes businesses are really slow at upgrading just because if that whole if it works don't mess with it you know and just let it run if it works because you know servers are on 24 7 they are never to be turned off because if you turn it off it's bad for business you start losing money CPU the boot sequence we're not gonna go into all of this just yet just because this is the uh, introductory video just so that you could start preparing but I will show you small difference between the ATX and the micro or the micro ATX and give you a little bit of history on both of them as you can see you can clearly see the difference Okay, and let's go with ATX here first. So Intel developed the advanced technology extended motherboard in the mid-1990s to improve upon the classic AT style motherboard architecture that had ruled over the PC world for many years. The ATX motherboard has a processor and memory slot slots at right angles to the expansion cards. So here you go. Um, this arrangement puts the processor and memory in line with the fan output of the power supply allowing the processor to run cooler and because those components are in are not in line with the expansion cards you can install full expansion cards adapters at the full length inside of a standard computer case in an ATX motherboard machine ATX and its derivative is the primary motherboard in use today Standard ATX motherboard measure 12 inches by 9 inches by 9.6 inches or 305 millimeters by 244 millimeters. Micro AT ATX follow the ATX principle of component placement for enhanced cooling over pre-ATX design but with a smaller footprint. Some trade-offs come with this smaller form. For the compact user space, you must give up quantity. That is quantity of memory slots, motherboard headers, expansion slots, and integrated components. Be aware that micro ATX systems tend to be designed with power supplies of lower wattage in order to help keep power consumption and heat production down. This is generally acceptable with the standard reduced micro ATX suite of components. Now let's go with ITX. We see here we have three different types of I, mini I, or ITX the 
ITX line of motherboard form factors were de was developed by VIA as a low power small form factor board for specialty uses such as home theater systems and embedded components. ITX itself is not an actual form factor but a family of form factors. The family consists of the, fam of the following of the fo following. Uh, there is mini ITX which is this one right here on the left. This one measures 6.7 by 6.7 so roughly 7 inches by 7 inches or 170 millimeters by 170 millimeters. Nano ITX which is almost 5 inches by 5 inches. Uh, Pico ITX which is 100 millimeters by 72 millimeters or 4 inches by 3 inches and then mobile ITX. Mobile ITX is if you're if you kind of get it it's, it says mobile so that means mobile phone so more than likely um, it is like what cell phones have three inches two and a half inches by two and a half inches some are faster than others it's all the same thing so this has been a real quick introduction to the a plus certification like I said, we I'm going to be following the 101, the 1001 exam objective. So the next video will have mobile devices or these right here. I will the video link should have a zip file download link so that you can download all five of these or all these PDFs that I showed you, um, and we will continue from there. Thank you and have a great day.